So hope everyone is well. How many people were in the, um, who was in the last session that we did? Um, and the reason I ask is so that I know kind of, um, I want to make this session obviously as productive as possible. Okay, good. If you have any questions, just throw them in the chat. Be happy to try and answer them. Today's session is going to have to be a little bit shorter than normal. Uh, we've got a conflict at the bottom of the hour. But I thought what we would do is because we, you know, um, have gone into, uh, you know, uh, lesson mode so much the last two or three sessions, okay, because we've gone into lesson mode, uh, I want to spend today really applying everything we've learned in the live markets uh, with live trading and analysis. Does that make sense? So if you have markets you want to take a look at, let me know. Otherwise, I'll uh, just go through a list of markets and try to put this whole global major market uh, puzzle together for you. And you'll see how we do it, applying one simple rule-based strategy. Now, when I say simple, what I mean is, I would argue that the rules for the strategy are very simple. Um, actually doing it is, challenge, is where the challenge is for people. Does that make sense? And of course, if, if you are new to the session or new to the information, um, this is a strategy I developed many years ago. And uh, on the trading floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, where we quantify the market's real supply and demand and identify uh, price levels where supply and demand is out of balance, right? where you have significant unfilled buy and sell orders, real demand, real supply, and then um, and also identify and charts and markets where you have uh, big pockets of filled orders. And as we know, unfilled orders cause prices to turn, filled orders facilitate price movement. Having said all that, let's, uh, let's get going. I see in the chat here, sure, we can, uh, so you're asking, do you take RBR and DBD setups on four hour and one hour charts? Uh, yes, but we take more than that. So that's one set, uh, that's one picture uh, of a uh, supply demand imbalance. But the mistake that many people make is they'll take kind of the picture that you described right there in your question, they'll, they'll take that picture, that pattern, and think it's an opportunity. Not every one of those is an opportunity. We have to run it through our filter, right? Okay, where is it on the larger time frame uh, supply demand picture? Is it in the middle or is it at the supply demand extremes. Okay. Now we could take a look at that here. Uh, why don't we start out by just looking at the S&P. So this is a level we had in yesterday for our uh, for the group that uh, you know I do a, a live trading session every morning for uh, the group here. Yeah context is key. Exactly Michael. Here's a level we had uh, the 2984 and uh, got down about 2980. This is the S&P. This is yesterday. So you know, if we, just so you're not confused, let me get rid of that white circle. And uh, let me go here. Okay, so there's our demand zone, right? We've had this. Now, if you look at this picture right here, okay, and let's make this a different color. Right. Now, let's look at a five-minute chart or 10-minute chart or whatever you want to look at next to that. Now, what does the yellow box represent? Filled orders or unfilled orders? What would you say to that? Filled orders or unfilled orders in the yellow box? Right, demand. Right, significant unfilled orders. We have the pattern, we have our, you know, odds and everything's in place. Okay. Um, what about the white box? Does that does the price action, does the picture there, the price action represent filled orders or unfilled orders? Filled orders, yes. So unfilled orders cause prices to turn like they did, and filled orders facilitate price movement. Now look over here on the five minute chart. Do we see any demand zones in here? This area that I'm kind of circling, this whole area here. See any demand zones? If you do, maybe call out a number. Uh, 
So, yeah. So down here, maybe? That one? Where else? And I'll put maybe some lines in. Yep, 30, or 307. So maybe up here? Yep. 15, sure. So we've got like three here, right? This one, maybe that one, that one. Well, what we have to understand is, look at the price points of all these. And the price they're the price points you're putting in the chat. Where are they in relation to this picture over on the right? Are they in the yellow box area or the white box area? Filled orders or unfilled orders, right. So even though the picture of demand may look really good over here, I wouldn't take those. Does that make sense? That's why one of the top questions that I get in my, you know, travels around the world and interactions with so many people, one of the one of the top questions I get is why do some levels work and others don't? Make sense? Okay. People just take that picture and say, "Okay, I'm going to buy there." You have to know context. Now again, I know this is not stuff that we normally talk about, but just wanted to, you know, uh give you a little you know, uh, get you closer to, you know, the answer and give you, give you an idea of why that is. Okay? All right. Let's keep going. So if you have a markets you want to look at, let me know. Otherwise, I can go through my list. Now, in my uh, trading session this morning with the members, here's something we went over that I'll, I'll share with you here. We said, you know, today's probably not a day where or at least in the early going we're going to have where we're going to have opportunities to enter positions in the forex markets low risk high reward and high probability opportunities now why would we say why would i say that look at the daily chart of the dollar the dollar is such a key market in this big uh, mix of currencies right it's right in the middle look at the re look at the range for the past couple weeks i'll just put a box around it you have to kind of include that high. But even, even if you don't include that high, you kind of have to. Let me, put a, let me change the color. See this range? Um, can there be a significant supply and demand imbalance for U.S. dollars inside this range? Or especially close to the middle of the range where price is now? No. There can't be. If there was, the picture would look very different. You'd see very little trading and price would shoot away from that area, right? Okay. Now out at the extremes, sure, we'll find some levels in there, but it's like right in the middle. So when we go to other FX markets that are very related to the dollar, the US dollar, we need to be very careful. Uh, but we can look at the Euro New Zealand. Um, 96. Oh, you're talking about this area? Yeah, down in here, uh, we're likely to find some demand. Yeah, you're saying right down in here, this area? And we'll take it all the way to the bottom. So we would go down in here. I think that's the one you're asking about, correct? Yeah, the only reason why I didn't put this in is because you're going to hit this again first. So this is the level we've had for a while, and uh, uh, anyway, there you go. Okay. So, yeah, we can look at uh, that market you wanted to take a look at. Just a second here. You want to look at the euro against uh, the New Zealand dollar? Sure. I think you were saying uh, possibly the weekly chart. So yeah, I don't see a whole lot um, going on here on the weekly. Let's go down a time frame. And um, now other things start to show up. So we look at current price, we go left and up, and we get to an area right here that's interesting. It's just one candle though, so we wanna go down to smaller time frames and, and take a look. So let's do that. Four-hour chart. 
Scrunch this up a little bit. There we go. So now an area of interest would be, yeah, up in here, this 177.55. That's 177.55, this area. And then, if you, of course, if you can get your stop above that, that would be uh, great. Okay. Is that the level you were speaking of? And, and if not, it does look like a, does look like a real good one. Uh, yeah, Aiden, exactly. Yeah, you never really want to call one candle a supply or demand zone because then everything becomes a supply demand zone, and that's just not that's just not the case. Now, obviously, there's supply and demand everywhere in the markets, right? That's otherwise prices wouldn't move. Uh, however, what we care about is identifying the picture that represents a significant supply and demand imbalance. Okay. All right, let's keep going. So why don't we took a, take a look at the yen? This is the dollar dollar yen. So we we track this market uh, uh, a lot in the in the morning sessions, and uh, there's a daily chart just for some context. Okay, just so you can see where we're at. And now we'll work our way down on the smaller time frames. Let's go to the four hour chart. And when we do, I'm sorry, the 180 minute chart. When we do, you're going to see there is a demand zone below current price. It's not that close. 107.38. That's 107.38, um, where we would expect prices. And there's a couple levels on top of each other there, actually. So we'd expect uh, prices to bounce here. And then um, there is another little short term trading level. Two of them actually seen on the five minute chart here. Now keep in mind uh, the difference between uh, the difference between the white circle and the yellow box because we have a uh, this is kind of a guide. For, these are charts off of our morning session. The white circle means it was a fresh level and it's now a tested level, so it's not fresh anymore. Right? The fact that it's not fresh means it's a lower probability level. There's less supply there. Price has been there already, which means you know some of those sell orders that make up the supply are filled. Does that make sense? However, sitting above that in the 108.22 area, up to 108.28, we have a fresh supply zone. So um, you can try this level again if you wanted to, and it met your you know your trading plan criteria, um, or you can wait for the upper level. Um, oh, good question, Andre. So Andre is saying, I think what you're saying basically is there's so much news in spot Forex. You know, would you take a level from that far back or this or that? I would. If you're asking what I would do, that's my answer. Um, you'll see that, and some of you that have been here for a while have probably seen this for the, over the years, news typically just speeds up what was going to happen anyway. Okay. Ultimately, Price almost always just moves from fresh supply to fresh demand and back again, you know, until those orders are gone, then it moves to the next set of levels, right? Um, the, the, the new, you know, if not always, but most of the time, you know, people get hurt by the news. It's not because of the news. It's because they're buying and selling in the wrong area. Okay, so what you'll find is, again, um, and, and if you really understand how this works, and we could go over this quite a bit deeper next time. We'll have a session just focused on news and price. We have tons of examples right from our FX Street sessions where, you know, the stronger the news is, the more that pushes price out to our key levels, right? And think about how markets really work. We can look at another market while we do that. Why don't we look at the, um, maybe not the Aussie dollar. We had some great levels here in the New Zealand dollar. Um, you know, this one off the daily is still working, but there is there is room. I'll show you. I'm not there. Okay. Well, let's just go, let's go here. 
So let's say we have a supply zone sitting, uh, which we do, sitting right up here. How is price going to get up to that level for a shorting opportunity? Well, a lot of people need to buy. In fact, enough people need to buy to get price to come up to this level, right? You need a, you need a lot of a lot of buying or demand, right? Good news. So how's that buying going to happen? You need an invitation to go out to the buyers. That invitation is almost always in the form of good news. So now good news comes out. And you have other levels here. You have a little supply zone here, maybe a little one here, right? You have all these little levels here, but maybe that's the one with where you have the significant supply. We have lots of sell orders. So what happens is, if it's you know if it's any old news, let's say it's good news, but it's not like great news. Maybe that brings price up to here. Maybe another time you have stronger news, but it's still not like super strong news, and that brings price up to here. And when I say, you know, the news is getting stronger, I mean, more people are interested in buying, right? But then all of a sudden, a significant, like a really big good news event comes out, which invites lots of people to buy. So there's tons of demand coming into the market. Well, you'll probably fill all the sell orders here at that level. Okay, pull this up. All these sell orders will probably get filled, but because the news is so good, you still have more demand looking for sell orders to get filled. So price will probably quickly come up to this. And now, you know, you're able to fill more of those buy orders coming in from the good news. Okay, now all those, all those sell orders are gone. Now price, there's still some buy orders left over. Now price comes up to here for the first time, this level. And now the remaining buy orders from that good news are able to get filled. And now that last buyer or buy order is filled at this level. What's the next move in price? Where's price going to go from there? It's going to go down. Down to where? Yeah, because now you have a lot of supply left over and no buyers. Your number, your buyers went to zero. But now price, so yeah, price is going to turn lower. Where's it going to turn? Where's it going to move to? little pop-ups here right what's gonna stop price from falling demand right hasn't everybody just everybody that was going to buy off the news haven't they just bought you see my point that's why so often you hear you see, you hear good news and let me tell you I'm not suggesting the news is fake or anything like that the news let's assume you know most of the news is probably real. I mean, an economic report is an economic report, right? It's not that the news is not real, okay? And that's why that news price relationship is so misunderstood by your average trader or investor. Okay? And that's why the professional consistently buys at demand or wholesale prices and sells at supply or retail prices and the typical retail trader or investor almost takes the opposite action. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, Andrew, you could you could send me an email. You know, I'll do my uh, I'll do my best. Yeah. So financial institutions and look, I that's how I started my career on the financial institution you know side of the business. I, I was on the professional side of the business. I started my career facilitating order flow for you know big banks and and financial institutions and so on. Um, and I I don't I I'm I mean it, I'm sure it happens once in a while, but I don't ever remember seeing some news come out and all of a sudden a financial institution decides oh instead of being a buyer we want a seller, like that that's not really how it works, right? What the professional knows that the average trader and investor doesn't is that how you make money buying and selling anything in life is exactly how you make money buying and selling in the markets. That's that's what people you know forget or don't pay attention to.
Okay. All right, let's keep going. So let's take a look at the uh, the bond market. And again, coming into today, there, there's no like new fresh levels close to current price. Actually, before we go to the bond market, there is one market we were going to take a look at. Yeah, that's not even a... Yeah, most of these levels are just, you know, moving off of uh, the levels that we've had already. Let's take a look. Yeah, so, you know, again, the S&P did come up to this supply up here, but it's not the first time it's there. It's not fresh. So it's no surprise that it's, you know, moving higher through it. Same thing with the NASDAQ. Let's take a look. And we can take a look at this chart right here. So this is all yesterday. If you can take a look at the NASDAQ, it's a good chart to look at. Uh, there we go. So price hit our supply zone and fell. There was a little demand down here in a different time frame. But now we're back up into that level that was that's not fresh anymore. And now we're hitting a another level that was tested already. Okay. So this should cause prices to slow equity index prices to slow down. But don't be surprised if this level doesn't hold up. It's not a you know, the equity index markets are designed to go up over time. So we're very careful shorting the equity index markets, especially at tested or um, you know, overnight supply zones, right? Uh, yeah, we can take a look at the metals, gold and stuff like that. Problem. But gold's another market. All you have to do is look at the daily chart right here in the upper right corner. See that? You know, you look at current price and it's like, okay, it's right in the middle of the past week and a half. So there's not much to look at. The one level we are watching in gold, so we're looking at the gold futures. You'll see it's right down here, 1484. I know it so well, I don't even have to look for it anymore. There it is. So we almost got down there yesterday. We're looking at the gold futures. And uh, that level at 1484 down to 1473. Really have two demand zones or even three sitting on top of each other. And uh, the nice thing is, look at how it's just below all of this trading activity here. This has happened to us uh, many times over the past years, where gold is just ranging and ranging and ranging, and right below, there's a key demand level sitting there. So we just wait for a price to go below that. Now, there are other small time frame levels. It's not like we have to wait weeks or days for a trade, um, but I just wanted to point that chart uh, to you. Okay? Again, all we're doing is identifying where banks, financial institutions, the professionals are buying and selling in the markets so we can buy and sell there also. That makes sense? And I know, again, last time we, we in the last two times, we kind of made the sessions more lesson-based. I wanted to, you know, get into the live markets today. All right, let's go to, um, I just want to look at the euro. There's not much to look at in the euro at the moment, but let's take a look. While that chart's coming up, is, uh, uh, let's see, Aiden, yeah, you could, I think you're saying, you know, you're getting close to supply, I think you're saying you're getting close to supply in the, in that market, but you still have 100 pips till you get there, I think you're saying, would you buy uh, a demand, a pullback to a demand zone? even though you only have 100 pips left. Is that, I think that's kind of what you're saying. Um, you could, on a smaller time frame, I would just, for me, I would make sure that my profit target is well before that, that supply zone. So if it's really 100 pips of the supply zone, you may want to make your profit target like 70 pips, uh, you know, 70 pips. Does that make sense? Or 30 pips before the level. All right, so for those of you who've been with us all year, as you know, we've been uh, very bearish the euro. Very bullish the dollar, only because the chart told us that, not because of any news we were focused on, right? So here's the euro. All it's done all year is trade from supply down to demand um, and actually developed a new zone here that's already been hit. So, you know, there's not a whole lot to do here in the euro, at least in the bigger time frames. When we come down to the um, smaller time frames, do have some levels here. That one's too far. Just a second. I don't have my guide with me here. That one's too far too. 
Um, yeah, it's it, there's there's not a whole lot to look at here in the Euro. We haven't really done much in the Euro lately just because it's, you know, in the bigger picture, it's doing exactly what we thought it was going to do. The uh, Aussie dollar, the Swiss, those have, you know, uh, bigger opportunities. Okay, let's go about right here. Yeah, so the strategy, right, is, um, you know, we use the strategy equally across any market, any time frame, and for any financial purpose, right? It's one rule-based strategy, any market, any financial purpose, meaning daily income, weekly income, building, protecting that longer-term wealth, any market, stocks, futures, Forex, options, bonds, crypto, real estate, it doesn't matter. It's all supply and demand, right? All right. Um, but having said all that, let me do this here. There is my, like I said earlier, we have to cut the session a little bit short today, but hopefully it was impactful and, and helpful. And if not, there's my email address, sam.sidon at tradingacademy.com. Um, you can always send me an email, and uh, I will do my best to, to help. Okay. Um, all right. All right, have a great day, everybody, and uh, you can watch those opportunities we went over. And again, if you have any questions, just let me know, and we'll see you, uh, we'll see you very soon in another uh, FX Street session.